Hello everybody, welcome to my final unboxing video for the Tyrants of Lothal Wave. I am going to be opening up the last two figure packs for the Wave, and that's going to be Hondo Onaka and Grand Admiral Thrawn. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and jump right in. Um, I actually just got these packs last week. I know the set's been out for a couple weeks now, so a lot of you probably have already opened these. But for those who are uh, trying to decide if you want to buy them, um, or maybe you're curious what's inside, this is going to be a good video for you. So I'm going to go ahead and open these. I've actually pre-cut these. Um, I tried to record myself cutting them open, but unfortunately something went wrong with the first take and the second take. Um, hopefully we don't get too much background noise this time. So I'm going to go ahead and spread everything out on the table. And then actually let's look at, we're going to start with Thrawn first the Admiral himself and I want to show you his figure to start off with so you can kind of get a good amount of detail there quite a powerful pose he's got now some people have noticed that the new figures from the wave are slightly larger um, in scale than some of the old ones just slightly like us uh, but especially Thrawn is quite tall um, compared to some of the other villains that have come out for the game. Just something to know and keep in mind. Um, honestly, when they're on the table, they I don't notice the difference at all, and it actually has made them quite easier to paint. Uh, I started painting my my rebel heroes, and it's quite nice. Anyway, um, so let's look at the cards. So we're going to put him over here, and we've got our pamphlet. We don't need this. Don't don't throw this away though. This is important. Uh, you get power tokens. Let's see what cards we have. So we have our command cards. We've got our agenda cards. Deployments. This. Logs. And our skirmish missions. Alright, so let us start off with the deployment cards. <clears throat> Let me push it, put that in the back. So you get two different deployment cards for Thrawn. You get a campaign version, um, uh, quite strong. So the campaign, the only difference between the campaign version and the skirmish version are these abilities right here. Uh, in the campaign version, you get to predict at the start of each round which hero the heroes are going to activate first, and basically they have to choose either activating that hero or taking a stun. So if they act, so basically you are in, you're trying to predict which is their best hero to activate first and then they're punishing them with a stun if they do that. Uh, patience, uh, whenever you activate a group, you may distribute among its figures different wild card power tokens equal to the number of exhausted rebel activation tokens. So that's pretty nice. Um, basically, the later in the round you use it, the more power tokens you get. <laughs> I'd like to point out that his attack has a double surge for plus three damage and three dice, as well as a basic plus two accuracy. So. Thrawn actually hits quite hard, especially if you can give him a uh, surge, uh, surge power token. Uh, then he is almost guaranteed to get that plus three damage surge going. And then let's look at his skirmish card. Same stats, but he has now has long laid plans. At the start of your activation, distribute among friendly figures different power tokens equal to the current round number. So note that. Um, Basically, it, another ability that scales the longer the game goes, kind of similar to Patience. Um, and if you, you, they have to be different power tokens, but they, he can give them to himself. And it does not have a range requirement. So he can kind of sit in the back in the deployment zone, really, and just pass out power tokens to friendly figures. And uh, he can also give them to himself. And note that if it's after round four, you can you, the maximum number you can distribute is four. And then he has strategize at the start of your activation. Look at the top command card of each player's deck. Can we discard one of those cards? Really nice built-in command card control. Um, a lot, most of the time, I think you're going to be using it to look at your opponent's top card. And um, you know, if it's something awesome, then just throw it in the graveyard or in the discard pile. And uh, if it's something meh, let them keep it. Keep it, and now you know what's in their hand next turn. I really like uh, Thrawn's deployment cards. I think they're really flavorful to who he is in the media, the lore. Um, he's somebody who likes to plan ahead. Uh, he's all about the long game. And I think they did a really good job representing that in his deployment cards. Okay, and then it comes with one skirmish upgrade. 
Uh, this is an this is not an attachment, so it just goes in your list for one point. Uh, it's a very complicated effect, so I'm just gonna kind of describe what it does. Um, basically, whenever a friendly vehicle or heavy weapon attacks, you can resolve this. Excuse me, exhaust this card, and choose uh, up to three hostile figures within two spaces of the target space, and that includes the target itself. So I'll try, I, I know I have a bad habit of shaking the cards when I'm talking. I'll try to not do that. Um, you choose, that can be the target itself, the three figures you choose within two spaces of the target, and then each of those figures suffers one damage. Now note, you can't choose, say, one figure and have it suffer three damage, it's just one damage to each of the figures that you chose, up to three, or not up to three, excuse me, it's not three, it is a number of figures equal to the printed uh, attack dice pool. So what that means is that if you're using this on a figure who is focused or like if you, you can use this on jets but if they're using their flyby that does not count towards the number you can pick. It is just the printed attack dice value right here. Also note that you cannot use it with Thrawn so don't try to do that. Um, but any vehicle or heavy weapon so that would be you can use this with Drakata and the Rebels um, with ATDP with uh, elite jet troopers um, but once you use it uh, for each figure that you chose with this ability you will suffer one harmful condition of your opponent's choice so basically you're probably going to become stunned and bleeding and weakened if you have three uh, this is a cool card it's uh, like i said very complicated I, uh, it's not very competitive it's just it's such a big cost you can only use this once per round because you have to exhaust it and you're basically just doing an extra damage to some figures around the target. Uh, it does add a damage to the target space itself, so that's good. But usually it's not going to be worth, like, especially if, you have, if you're using it on an expensive figure like Drakata or an ATDP, getting stunned and bleeding on a figure that, that's expensive is really going to hurt that figure's um, presence in the game. I think this could be good with Jet Troopers. I think they're cheap enough that you might want to try this. But it looks like a fun card, and I think a lot of people will have fun experimenting with it. Okay, so let's look at the command cards. So first we have Thrawn's personal command card for C. Um, he gets to, it's very similar to his, uh, I believe, strategize ability in the skirmish card. You get to look at the top two command cards of your opponent's deck, and it's during your activation, and then you can discard one of those cards. Actually, you have to discard one of those cards, and if it costs one or less, you get to draw one command card. So this is really nice. Um, don't if you if you find something that costs three or more, and another thing that costs one or less, discard the thing that costs three or more. Even though you get to draw a card, that's basically just a uh, insurance policy in case you only see crap on the top of your opponent's deck. Always go for the good command card with 4C. Again, another nice, and this costs zero points, so it should be pretty easy to fit into a list. Uh, really good command card control with Thrawn. And again, plays into his theme of playing the long game and knowing what's going on before the opponent knows what's going on. Next card is Price of Glory. Any Imperial figure, two points. Use during your activation to discard a harmful condition and gain two movement points. Then you may suffer one damage to gain up to two different power tokens. Uh, so this is really cool. There's actually uh, a cycle of these. There's another one in Hondo. Basically like uh, the card Heart of Freedom is a card that we've seen in the Rebels and now the Mercenaries and Empire kind of gets their own version. Uh, the Harmful Condition Removal, and it, that's not going to happen that often, but when it does happen it's amazing when you get to remove a stun or bleed for free. Uh, two movement points is also awesome. And then Suffering and Damage to gain two power tokens, also great. Um, a lot of times you'll just take two block power tokens and it puts you up one one health, basically. Uh, really good card for Empire, especially if you're running Vader. Next is Induce Rage. At the start, use at the start of the round, choose up to two figures. Each of those figures discards each of its conditions and gains one uh, damage power token for each condition discarded this way. So you can use this to remove focus, any condition, um, harmful or positive. You can remove focuses, you can remove hidden. You can remove stun, bleeding, you can't remove power tokens, remember that. I think the best case for this is to remove uh, harmful conditions um, and then replacing them with a power token on your friendly figures. I think removing a focus and giving them a power token is kind of taking away two and giving them one. 
I think if you have a lot of cards like Parting Blow that give your figures harmful conditions, this is a cool card to consider. And then Combat Resupply, uh, another common theme in the wave of giving out extra bonuses the longer the game goes. Basically, you get to distribute power tokens equal to the current round to a friendly figure within three spaces. Uh, this is fine. Uh, we've seen similar cards like um, I think Ready Weapons for Troopers, although this is for any figure, any Imperial figure. And it doesn't cost an action, so that's really nice. Um, yeah, I think even the worst case scenario, you play this on turn two, round two, you get two power tokens from it. It's fine. Um, it's a good card. Solid card. Okay, and then let's see. We've got our agenda set. Actually, I'm going to go in reverse order. So we have our first card, and this is the agenda set, The Art of War. Three steps ahead. Start of each Imperial upgrade stage before drawing agenda. You may put the top three cards in the agenda deck, then discard any number, then place the rest back on top in any order. Um, I like this effect. I don't know if it's worth two influence um, to be able to sculpt your agenda deck. Uh, to be honest, I haven't played as the Empire in campaign in a while. But I do remember like trying to get that one agenda card you really wanted was really important, especially when you needed it, like during before a, a side mission. Um, this could be a really good way to sculpt that double agenda side mission that you want to set up so your rebels can only pick one or the other. But again, two influence, and it doesn't get you any kind of card advantage or anything. Not sure. Uh, piece by piece. Uh, it's a secret card. You can play it after hero attacks. That hero may test insight and increase the threat by the threat level minus the number of successes. Uh, then discard this card. I like this card for influence. Free threat is good. Um, you just choose the hero that has crappy insight and hope they roll bad and then you get like a free turn of threat. For one influence, yeah, I like this card. It's good. Admiral's Grip. And this is the side mission for Thrawn. Um, you get Thrawn as a villain if you win this as a side mission and campaign. This is also employed in the um, Tyrants of Othal mini campaign as an expansion mission that expands the game. Um, it's three influence. Looking at Thrawn, um, yeah, I would take this and I would hope to win it because Thrawn looks like a really strong figure in campaign. And then we have the story epilogues for if you use that mission as a side mission or as a part of your Tyrants of Lothal campaign. Uh, next we have, let's look at the skirmish mission that comes with this. I've actually heard this is a really interesting one. So the skirmish mission is called Imperial Tower. I'm going to show it like that. And yes, that's right, it's actually two maps. Two maps that sit next to each other. And let's see how this works. So, Intruder Alert. Center that. You can see that is your mission A. Basically, it looks like they start off, there's elevators that link the map, these mission tokens, and you're jumping across maps. Kind of reminds me of a map from Halo called Boarding Action, one of my favorite maps. Uh, this looks really cool, and here is mission side B. You can read that because it's a lot of words. All right, I'm not going to show you the campaign mission because that would be cheating, Rebels. Stop that. And that is it. So let so just a review. This is everything that comes with the Grand Admiral Thrawn pack. All right, and now let us take a look at Hondo. Clear that all out of the way. Go over there. Now. All right, Hondo Onaka, friend for hire. Here is his figure. Put that there, so we know who we're looking at. He's got one arm out and one arm behind his back with a blaster. I love it. I love this pose. I don't think the previews did it justice because they don't show you that blaster back there. Very Hondo. And for those who don't know, this character is from the Rebels cartoon show. I believe he actually premiered in the Clone Wars show on Cartoon Network. But he kind of became more prominent in the new Rebels TV show. Which a lot of these characters are from. Alright, so we've got command cards. We've got agenda set. We've got deployment cards. Epilogue and... Alright, so let's take a look at the deployment cards. We have Hondo's campaign card. 
Um, six points for nine health, similar to Thrawn. Three dice, also similar. Surge abilities, eh, not as good, but we'll see what he does. I think it makes up for that. His main ability is Negotiate. When you declare an attack, the heroes must choose to either increase the threat by two or apply plus two damage to the attack results. So, uh, really neat, basically giving your rebels two bad choices to choose from. Uh, sometimes it'll bite you when, you know, like when they're, the attack's going to kill a rebel anyway, so they'll just give you the plus two damage so you don't get the threat. Um, I actually think, or, or if you really need that plus two damage to wound a hero, they'll just give you two threat if it's the last round. But I think these are two bad enough choices that they're going to hurt either way. And his other ability, Ulterior Motive, when you enter a space containing a crate, increase the threat by two, limit once per crate. So that's really neat, I like that Hondo can pick up crates. I think this is the first ability that Empire's had that allows them to benefit from crates on the map. Um, a lot of Rebels I know like to avoid crates because they take up so much actions. Well, now you can punish them for that. Really cool and very flavorful because Hondo likes treasure chests. And then his skirmish version, um, same stats, negotiate, but a little bit different. Um, instead of choosing vic uh, threat, they can choose to pay two victory points or take the plus two damage. Uh, the two victory points, that means that they have to reduce their victory points by two and you increase your victory points by two. That is a lot of, that's a four victory point swing. I think usually you're going to take the plus two damage in most cases, unless it's going to result in an overkill. But that makes his attack very strong. Plus two damage naturally with three dice and the search for plus one. He hits really hard. Um, and he has five speed. He's, he's going to move around. He's really good at skirmish. Um, and then he has a bonus ability that I think is probably very rarely going to come up, but it's going to be cool when it does. Basically, if he, at the end of the round, if he's in an opponent's deployment zone, they have to pay you two victory points. Uh, note that that is not the end of his activation. You have to get in there and then survive the entire round. But, you know, just move him last. Move ten spaces, you could probably do it. Alright, and now we have Lion Ambush as our skirmish upgrade. Another one that's very complicated, so I'm just going to let you read it and kind of explain what it does. Um, you can only put it on non-massive, non-unique figures. It's an attachment, however you don't attach it until the until setup, then you get to choose one of your figures that doesn't have an attachment and attach this to them, and they don't deploy as your normal. What will happen is at the in the second round, after an opponent finishes activating a group, uh, if you have resolved three activations or and or have three defeated figures, you get to deploy the group that this is attached to in either deployment zone. I just want to clarify that. It mean and or means that if you have a combination of say two figures groups that you've activated and you have one defeated group that means that this is going to trigger and you can, this is not an optional trigger so as soon as that um, becomes true and it's at least so you know people are saying well what if one of my figures dies and, and then I have four defeated figures before this could trigger no it'll trigger uh, it, they're gonna come out so you can't just sit up leave them out of the battle uh, this is a really fun card I think I really want to try this on like a wampa because those things are really slow but they hit really hard um, I think there's a lot of cool stuff we can do kind of sad you can't put it on any uniques at all uh, also but I am glad that you can't uh, plop a bantha in your opponent's deployment zone in round two because that would be really annoying all right so that's that let's look at the command cards for skirmish we have Hondo's card while defending. Pay your opponent X victory points to apply minus X damage to the attack results, then you become focused. Zero cost. Uh, I think this card's good. Um, I don't know if I would... I usually don't play the named cards because it's such a, a liability when they die, but zero points, become focused, is basically what this card says to me. Um, and then it also makes them more survivable if you want to throw away the victory points on that, but just getting focused for free for zero points the thing is though that hondo uh, his card doesn't really benefit a lot from being focused because his surge abilities are so bad so that yeah i'm not sure about this card but it's zero so it might be you might be able to fit it into a list uh next i really like this card hostile negotiation any figure during your activation you discard a random command card if you do your opponent discards two random command cards 
one point. I really like this card. Uh, I like symmetrical effects like this because you get to, as a person playing it, you get to decide when this gets played. So let's say you burn most of your command cards in your hand and you've just got one crappy one left. Well, then play this. Any of your figures can play it. And then you can try and get two good ones, two juicy cards from your opponent's hand. Um, something to note is that if this is the only card left in your hand and you play it, nothing happens because you didn't, you weren't able to discard a random command card. Um, but yeah, I really like this. I, I, I like playing spies and I like messing with my opponent's command cards. Really cool card. And then we have worth every credit. This is similar to the other card we saw for two points. Uh, you get discard one harmful condition, gain two movement points, and when the next hostile figure is defeated during this activation, you gain two victory points. <clears throat> yeah, um, this one's good. I think, again, I think I would play this just for the two movement points a lot of the time. Um, it's really good with IG-88. He really likes getting extra movement points for free. And there's also a list um, being played by Mercenaries right now that manipulates victory points that is doing really well. You've probably seen it if you watch my skirmish videos because a lot of our local players like to play it. Uh, and I think this slots right in. I think two. I think it is, might be a little too expensive for two. Um, it's hard to fit into Hunter lists, but um, it's a really good card, and I think it will find a place. It'll find a home in, in some Mercenary lists, especially with IG-88 or some other heavy-hitting Hunter that likes to move up close, like maybe Bosk. Bosk would like this card. And then we have Out of Time. Um, any mercenary figure to use during activation, hostile figure within three spaces, and line of sight suffers strain equal to the current round number. So this is our equal to the current round number card for this, this pack. Um, this is fun. I think if you play this in a strain list that can, or with something like Shoot the Messenger, uh, the command card that takes away three cards from the top of the opponent's deck, if you can empty your opponent's deck by round three, this is a free three damage for no no actions. That's really good. Um, that's just great. Um, if you can't, though, it doesn't do much. Yeah, this card is kind of controversial. I don't know how I feel about it yet. You guys should try it. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think of this card, because I think it's really interesting. Okay, and then for campaign, let's take a look at the agenda cards. So we have Missing Treasure, uh, any mission, oh, so you can basically deploy Hondo even if you haven't earned him as a villain uh, without playing his, excuse me, without paying his deployment cost, but he cannot declare attacks during this mission. So basically you are just using him to block line of sight, block movement, um, take actions if needed, and also you can take those crates for, for threat. I like this card, only one influence, I think it's fun. Um, I really like these kind of cards that let you take the the villain without having to earn him through the side mission, um, but then puts a restriction on it because, you know, it's, it's just a way to get the figure on the table. So I like that they included this card with the agenda set. And then we have Final Offer. This is a secret card, you can play it during any mission when a mercenary figure attacks. The heroes must choose either increase the threat by 3 or apply a plus 2 to the attack results. Then discard this card for 1 influence. Basically gives you a slightly stronger version of Hondo's negotiate ability. Um, not sure if I would pay influence for this, especially since you only get to use it once. Unlike Hondo who uses it every time he attacks. You have to use it in a very specific moment and hope that the rebels pick the wrong choice because there's always going to be a right choice and a wrong choice um, I think usually the wrong choice is to give them the threat although if it's late in the game then you give them the damage I'm not sure but this is a fun card it's for only one influence and then we have Hondo's mission and again this is a side mission that you can buy to earn Hondo as a villain or you can use this in the Tyrants of Lothal mini campaign to expand it and add an extra mission to the campaign which I really like and I think it's really worth it to pick these up to make that campaign longer. And we have the epilogues for that mission. This is how you incorporate it into the Tyrants of Lothal mini campaign. And then the last thing we should look at here is the skirmish mission, the Lothal spaceport. And actually I also want to show this has an important thing about what it means to pay victory points. 
um, basically tells you that if it instructs you to pay, you lose that player loses and the other player gains that many victory points. Um, if a, an ability requires a player to pay victory points that they don't have, then they can't use that ability. By the way, that means that if you are attacking someone with negotiate and they have they don't have they only have one or less victory points, they have to take the two damage. So that's kind of cool. Uh, and if a player's ability requires an opponent to pay more victory points than they have, that opponent pays all the remaining victory points. Uh, and again, I want to clarify with negotiate, that does not require victory point payment. You can avoid that by taking the plus two damage. So you can't force your opponent to pay victory points using this rule. All right, and then let's look at a little fall action. Actually, I'll bring it up close here so you can get a good look at it. Uses some of the uh, Tyrants of Lothal tiles. And here is the card itself. Vision side A. And mission side B. All right, so that is everything in these packs. Um, so let me bring these back on here. I like these villains. I think they're really good. They're going to be really both really good in skirmish. I think they're fun. They offer a lot of fun stuff for campaign. If you're playing the Tyrants of Lothal mini campaign, you definitely want to pick these up uh, to add to that uh, that experience. And yeah, so that's Hondo and Thrawn. Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate you uh, joining me in this channel. Please like uh, if you like this. If you like the video, if you want to see more, please subscribe for more videos. We've got more skirmish games coming up and we're going to have some more strategy content coming up soon thanks for watching bye